Welcome, friends. This is an episode three of my Enigmatica 2 expert extended playthrough. And in the last couple episodes, we managed to establish uh, this small base, as well as craft ourselves a, a set of essential tools and armor, tame a horse, build a smeltery, establish a simple storage system, as well as build a farm and kitchen and get ourselves some very nutritious food. And so in this episode, since we are established all of the essentials, it is time for us to venture outside of our small base and see what we can get from the world around us. Specifically, I would like to go into these gates uh, of the Conflux level one, open up all of these gates and really get into the first chapters of this mod pack, such as industrial craft, forestry, immersive engineering, Thorncraft and Astral Sorcery to begin with. So I'm really excited to see what's out there and let's uh, just finish our final preparations. I realized that we still don't have a ranged weapon and we'll need one on our travel, so I decided to craft myself one. This is a wood electrum shortbow and it's made out of three parts. A bow limb made of, out of wood, another bow limb made out of electrum, and then hemp fiber uh, bowstring. So the Electrum bow limb, actually, if, you, if we take a look at the stats, provides really fast draw speed of 0.67 seconds. So this is really fast. And then wooden one provides a draw speed of one, but it also uh, has ecological trait. So the uh, damage on our bow will be self-repairing uh, in a while. The Electrum bow limb required Electrum, and you can make Electrum by mixing uh, silver and gold. And from our uh, quest uh, where we ground, ground um, gold ore uh, into gold uh, and tiny pile of silver dust that completed this quest. So I actually uh, gained some uh, electron blend as a reward. Um, for the arrows, I decided to use, um, again, the sky stone, the magic material. I have sky stone armor, sky stone tools, and also sky stone arrows. So this has a sky stone arrow head, wooden arrow shaft, and feather fletching. Um, the arrows also will recover over time, but I built three of them because like we see the ammo is just eight on each of these arrows. So uh, we have 24 total. Uh, let me show you uh, how this bow shoots. So here I have a practice target and you can see the speed is really fast. So this might be not the deadliest of both, but it will get the job done. I have packed my things. We have our trusty horse ready. Our backpack contains some candles, enhanced saddle and sky stone for repairing our tools and armor. We have some food on us um, and we practically are ready to go. The only thing I wanted to do is uh, take with me some of the rewards from one of the quests. So let's take a look at the quest book and this gate, which opens up uh, the uh, chapter of forestry and the mode of forestry. And that requires crafting a sturdy casing. And um, I actually had enough material to craft ourselves some bronze, uh, bronze gear and copper gear, which is enough for the sturdy casing. With the sturdy casing, let's complete the uh, forestry quest and let's claim a reward. I'll actually take more sturdy casings. And then if we go back to the forestry chapter, there is this very first quest, forestry, which basically it has no task. It basically is, is an entrance to the forestry chapter, but the rewards here is bee smoker and a scoop. And uh, these are the two things I wanted to take with us on our travels because we will encounter some beehives and I would like to uh, collect some bees uh, right away while we do our exploration. And the last thing I've done, I've completed the quest for a uh, carpenter uh, and a quest for mining backpack. So um, the reward for a quest for the mining backpack was a woven digging backpack. These backpacks are basically a storage which you can open with right click, but these backpacks will automatically pick up items. This one will pick items like uh, various types of ores you can find mining. And this backpack, the digging backpack, will pick up stuff like cobblestone, grass blocks, dirt blocks, 
uh, send things like that. So this will save us inventory space and these are very useful items we can use on the go. It is a nice morning and we have packed our bags and we are ready to leave. I think I will basically drive uh, our horse west from here and let's see what I can find. We are looking at our first uh, meadows hive from forestry and we have in our hands a bee smoker. So if I start collecting this hive like this, you see bees are hitting me and my horse. So what I'll do, I'll smoke this beehive and this calms the bees down and then I can use my scoop to harvest the hive and get some bees. So the bees I get is the drone and the queen and the queens can be from two types of stock. One will be ignoble stock, just like this bee, and then one be pristine stock. So the pristine stock is what I'm looking for, as ignoble stock bees, uh, the princesses, will die off after a couple generations. So we have our first bee, let's continue forward. As I travel, I will find some uh, exotic plants, uh, like this is persimmon, and then here is some figs, um, and then here are some uh, peaches, I believe. Oh, grapefruits. So anyway, uh, what I'll do, I will collect all these uh, all these fruits because uh, eating each one of them, which weren't yet eaten, will um, brings more hearts uh, to our life pool. So I will try to harvest as much of the of the new foods as possible. Also, here we can see a, a silverwood tree. Uh, this is from Thorncraft and this tree is um, it's good to harvest some of this wood because we'll need it for the Thorncraft um, and we need excavate modifier to harvest it so what I'll do I'll put my my axe in the offhand and do like this this allows us to collect uh, many blocks at the same time I don't have to harvest the whole tree but um, it's actually it's good to uh, get at least one sapling so now we can plant the silver wood back home. This is a potato uh, from forestry. We can uh, harvest it right now. And the uh, apatito, one of the things it is good for is to make fertilizer. This fertilizer is from forestry mode. And so in the beginning, as we progress through the forestry mode quest line, we'll need a bit of the fertilizer. This is why I'll try to harvest it when I see it. It is a beautiful morning. Um, we just spent our first night under the starry skies and uh, for that we used our sleeping bag which is attached to the traveler's backpack and this is one other thing I wanted to uh, highlight so uh, in the last episode I told that you can pack your bag and then just break the backpack however uh, the moth author uh, Krutoi242 actually commented that you can pick up your backpack right away if you shift right click on your backpack it will be immediately on your back and um, I wanted to highlight specifically that this is not going to work if you have an item in your off hand and you try to pick up I'm trying to pick it up right now and it's not working so you need to remove this and only then you'll be able to put it on your back so I think this is very neat and uh, if you didn't yet uh, took a look at this Please join the Enigmatica 2 uh, Expert Extended Discord for uh, lots of uh, nice discussions and also tips and tricks like that. So uh, let's continue uh, onward. Um, just in the river here, I noticed some aquamarine shale and I wanted to um, show you something. So I can harvest this aquamarine shale uh, using our mattock here. And when I do, it drops uh, and it went to our mining backpack like it should be. It dropped aquamarine. Aquamarine from Astral Sorcery is very important material for Astral Sorcery mod and we'll use this material l later in pretty large quantity. So when I see one, I will definitely collect it. However, one other thing which I wanted to show is this trick about using your orb hand tool to get some item uh, traits. So for example, this Skystone pickaxe, it has a copper tool rolled handle, which has a trait well established. And this trait provides us experience when we mine things. However, 
this Skystone uh, Matic, this one doesn't have the well-established trace. So if we mine something with this uh, Matic, we will not get additional XP. However, if I put it into the offhand and I switch to my uh, Skystone pickaxe and I try to mine this, this dirt here, then you see the Matic is used instead. And see, we are collecting experience. We came to the uh, magical forest biome. You can see the biome name in the top right corner. Um, and this biome uh, is home to a lot of things from Thomcraft. For example, again, this uh, silverwood uh, tree here. The silverwood trees usually have a couple shimmer leaves around them. And, and these things, uh, these shimmer leaves, they can be used to harvest the quicksilver, which will uh, need a little bit from the mod. Also, uh, this biome is a home to these uh, sets of um, moss stone blocks, um, which um, will be useful for some of the quests later on in the game. So I will collect uh, just a little bit as I go. Another thing you can see over here by the water is there are some slimes uh, raining from the sky. And this is because right above, uh, above us, there is a slime uh, island and they are falling from this island. And so uh, I think I will just have to uh, travel up there and show you what's up there. Um, and then um, yet another thing here is this um, mushroom, um, mushroom trees, which we can collect for mushrooms and use this in uh, cooking recipes. And then the other thing which I noticed right over here, that there is trees with the darker leaves and these are uh, rubber trees from industrial craft and we'll need them really really soon because industrial craft is one of the mods which we'll uh, have to do right after we are back and uh, we'll need a couple saplings so I will harvest these trees for uh, saplings. Before we climb over uh, to the slime island I wanted to highlight something in the last episode, I was talking about the, the trash can and how you can delete items in, in the trash can. And actually in the comments, um, a, a user named Rido Strike commented that you don't have to click all the way over there. All you need to do is hover over the item and press control and then delete. And that deletes the item. Uh, thank you so much Rido Strike for this uh, comment this is very useful and uh, i wanted to thank everyone who actually posts comments with uh, tips uh, which allow me to be better at this game so thank you so much and keep these comments coming so let's climb over to the slime island now in order to climb this island i uh, harvested a couple of trees and then i built this replaceable scaffolding from cyclic mod and you can actually place this block me there like this and then if you shift right click on this block, you can build it very tall. Uh, and then uh, what you just need to do is uh, to climb it like a ladder. And then this allows us to climb up on the block. And then if we want, uh, continue upward. So let me get to the island. So I have climbed on the island. Um, so this is how Slime Island looks like. It has a pool of uh, liquid blue slime in the middle and then it has some congealed slime blocks which we uh, can collect in this case we have two colors the the blue and the green um, then we also have these uh, trees slime trees so we can uh, harvest these trees and and then once they are harvested they drop this uh, these saplings here the, these purple saplings, they only grow on slimy dirt or slimy grass. So we have to collect ourselves some uh, slimy dirt in order to grow these trees back at home. Um, and it's actually, th this, this island has a pretty nice view. And our base is just beside, um, just beyond this hill over there. But so uh, let me run around this island and uh, harvest a bunch of stuff and I'll be back. So we have harvested a, a bunch of things from this island. And now my guess is the best way of climbing down from the island is just jumping into the water, which is always fun. I was uh, traveling in this mangrove, looks like forest. And I noticed there is something weird 
in the trees. So there is some sort of hydra over there. Uh, and because we have a pretty crappy bow and pretty crappy sword, I don't think we are ready to engage this thing yet. I actually have no idea what this thing is. Maybe someone in the comments can tell me. But at this point, I guess we'll, we'll try to avoid whatever it is. This is actually a good point to highlight uh, the the map. So if we press J and this is um, this is the short uh, cut which I uh, set up for myself. This is this Hydra thing over here on the map. So you can double click and let's say uh, name your location, click save. And now there is a uh, waypoint here saved. If we go to the waypoints, we can disable this waypoint so it doesn't show anymore. But um, this way you can create waypoint for yourself and then find this location later uh, and get back to it if you need to. Um, here is another tree from uh, the Thomcraft mod and it's called Greatwood. And uh, again, I will need to put my Skystone mattock in order to harvest it. And I also need to uh, harvest some of the leaves as well to get the sapling. So let me climb up there and try to harvest the leaves for the sapling. So I have harvested myself a couple of great wood saplings, bunch of great wood logs. And one of the things I wanted to show you that at the base of the tree, which I harvested, there is this uh, cave spider spawner. So let's break the spawner. And then below that spawner, by, by the way, we are, we are getting broken spawner. And then below that spawner, there is a chest full of items. So we came to what looks like a jungle over here. And in my experience, jungle is pretty rare biome. Also, we have uh, here some melons. So let's, let's collect them so we can bring them home. And let's take a look at this jungle or rather Let's take a look if it is jungle. Yep. So in the top right corner, you can see that it's called jungle, this biome. So in the jungle biome, there are um, beehives, jungle beehives, and they are pretty rare. All right. So here is what I was looking for. And let me tell you, these hives, um, tropical hives are really tough to spot because uh, of how blunt they look. But let's put some smoke onto this thing and then harvest it. And this is how we got ourselves some tropical bees, unfortunately uh, of a noble stock, but that's fine. We will have to cross the marsh here. Uh, and so I have put our red hand saddle on a horse and we will continue through the water by just walking on ice. Um, we have arrived at the nuclear wasteland biome and in, in the bottom right corner you see the radiation exposure we are getting here is quite large. Uh, we can collect this um, um, this glowing mushrooms here in this biome and glowing mushrooms are used for some crafting um, in order to uh, remove the radiation we are getting right now. So I just collected a couple mushrooms and I think it's time for us to run away from this biome just because of the immense radiation exposure we are getting while we're here. As the time uh, goes by and we are away from the irradiated biome, um, the radiation slowly will wither away from us. Um, here is quite interesting spot. I just came out of this forest over there and there are like desert mountains all around this lake here. And in the middle of the lake, we see uh, this dragon skeleton. So uh, let me come closer. In order to uh, harvest the skeleton, we need to right click with an empty hand, I believe. I have collected some bones and a dragon skull. So this, this dragon bones and a dragon skull, they will be useful for us because some recipes and tinkers construct um, items as well require these bones. 
Um, here is some interesting uh, spot over here. It looks like a piece of nether in the overworld. Um, it has, among other things, what looks like an essence ore, which is mining level obsidian, and we can harvest it right now. Also, it seems like some zombie is trying to sneak on me, so let's just kill him. Um, so, I will be able to harvest some lava here, then some uh, soul sand, um, some obsidian, which is again, this is a uh, mining level osmium, so we can harvest it, uh, and maybe some iron ores. So, all in all, I think it's pretty pretty nice spot, and let's do some harvesting. So looking over this place now, it looks much more bland. However, we have now lots of nether resources I've collected out of this hole. The next things I think we are going to do is we are going to visit this pyramid and then this mysterious structure. If this structure is very well guarded, we'll not go into it, but at least we'll go take a look what's there. So here we are in the desert. First of all, there is a, a pyramid right next to this structure. But I also wanted to kind of highlight what deserts are known for in this pack. So first of all, from the Thomcraft, you can uh, collect the cinder pearls in the desert. And cinder pearls are good because you can craft blaze powder out of them without the need to go in the nether. Then um, obviously the desert is home of the cacti um, and we can collect these as well. Um, and then it's much easier to spot these, these dragons uh, and again, we right click on them and we can collect things like skulls uh, and I think over there in the distance there is another one and then a lot of cinder pearls as well and then this structure here is from astral sorcery and this will become super important. So there are just so many things we can do. So here we are at this uh, structure from Astral Sorcery. Let's uh, dig it out. So once we clear the sand away, we see that this is some kind of a shrine and let's just see what's, what's in here. So let's just dig into the shrine and see. And as we dig into it, we see that right in the middle of a shrine, there is this fro floating crystal from Astral Sorcery. Um, looking at this crystal, this is a good point to progress uh, in Astral Sorcery. So if we go to the quest line, this uh, Conflux, level, Conflux Level 2 quest line has a gate, Astral Sorcery, and it only requires a Comarian to finish, so we'll just collect our rewards. And then this opens up the quest line for Astral Sorcery. So the first quest doesn't require anything and we get 32 uh, marble as a reward. Basically, this welcomes us to Astral Sorcery. The next quest in line here is the quest for the Luminous Crafting Table. And the Luminous Crafting Table requires, so this is the recipe for it, it requires some marble, Suthi marble, and a workbench. But it also requires a starlight. We can get starlight just from this crystal inside. Here is how it works. We put a regular crafting table over here, and when we do, you see there is a beam of light shining right on the table in the middle there. And then let's put the ingredients for the luminous crafting table and let's craft it. So now it's done. Let's complete the quest and get our reward. The other quest which we can finish sitting there by the floating crystal is this resonating wand. So let's do this. And we have crafted the wand and let's collect the reward for that as well. Another thing we can see inside this shrine is this chest and it has a couple constellation papers in it. So when we collect these papers in the bottom left, it says you memorize the drawing of Dissidia, you memorize the drawing of Armara. So these are constellations and now these papers, they transformed into the papers for relative constellations here. So we'll, we'll have to travel to a couple of such shrines and collect these uh, constellation papers. Now is the time to check out the pyramid. And let's go around and search for the entrance. So looks like this is the entrance. Let's just dismount our horse and take a look. This doesn't look like a regular Minecraft pyramid. Oh yeah, 
So there is a monster spawner there. It looks like it's a zombie spawner. So what I like to do in such situations is I like to block off. As you can see, I have a cobblestone block uh, at my fingertips. The reason you hear uh, explosions uh, in the distance this is because of spe precisely because of the sky stone uh, core on my armor and the hail hydra trait uh, of these uh, equipment pieces. So the enemies near us explode. Let's take a look at this zombie. Let's, you see? So these explosions are kind of random and they don't hurt us, but they certainly hurt them. So I uh, cleared this room and it looks like there are a couple zombie spawners over here, no chests around the room. I don't think I'm going to break the spawners just yet. I might uh, use the spawners later for something. Um, and in general, uh, it looks like this whole building uh, is a maze uh, of corridors and then rooms filled with, with zombies. So we uh, will have to go carefully and, and clear this room by room and then light up the area uh, as we go. I found a room here with a couple chests, so let's take a look what's inside. This item we found in the chest, the leather backpack, is a variation of the backpack which we already have and this variation is just made by putting leather around the regular one and this is simply a, a cosmetically different backpack but what's good about it is that now in addition to the backpack we already have we have a pretty large inventory we can fill with items we find in our travels so um, I think this is really good e expansion of our inventory um, I don't think we will be clearing the whole pyramid and I will simply mark it on my map and get back to it later. So right now let's go take a look at this tall structure over there. As I was uh, trying to get to this building, I have seen uh, some <laughs> worm-like creature over there. So it looks small enough, uh, let's try to kill it using our short bow. Okay, we got it killed. Uh, let's take a look what was the drop. Um, looks like the drop was just rotten flesh, nothing, nothing fancy. Looks like there are some steps we can use to travel up. I wonder what's it, what is it? up top. I see some dragon skeleton over there. Looks like the sun is setting over the horizon. It takes very long time to get up to the top. Very interesting. So the top of the structure has a pool of water and then this water is dripping down uh, the whole spiral of the ladder which we climb down. And this place is a good vantage point to look around the desert around us. Um, so this is that beautiful lake which I mentioned we saw when we traveled over here. Um, and the desert is pretty large. I'm sure there are a couple other structures hidden under the sand which I didn't notice. But also what's interesting is that this whole pool of water is made out of uh, blocks of quartz. And this is really useful to us, so I think we will harvest it all. Also, this rim of the stairs of the tower is made of the blocks of quartz as well. So I think I will harvest them because they are, um, again, a great source of the uh, nether quartz without going to the nether. I was curious and I went to take a look inside of this hollow structure. And it looks like this whole thing is a basically a pretty large hole uh, with a with a flat bottom. And maybe there is something down there, I'm not exactly sure. So from up here we can actually see that the creature we were hunting before is called a death worm. 
So yeah, looks like it's some sort of a sandworm. So we went to the very first floor and I broke a wall inside this structure. And let's carefully try to absorb what's in the middle. There are a couple creepers over there, which is slightly dangerous, but with our ridiculously good armor piece, they are no match to us. So looks like there is nothing really interesting in there besides this uh, structure at the bottom. I can try to dig into it and see what's underneath, but for now it looks it's just sand. So yeah, this was a really interesting structure, um, but it doesn't contain any sort of loot or I couldn't find any. But then the next thing I wanted to explore is this small floating island, which looks like it is made out of the end stone. Let me get up there. So this floating island uh, contains some end stone, entropy end stone, and then this enderemus plants, which if we harvest, we get an ender pearl from each. So under one of the pillars, there was a monster spawner for endermite. And I checked the uh, GI for endermite. And it looks like these endermites, they don't really drop anything. So I'll just collect the spawner. It looks like the whole island contained 25 endstone and 42 entropy endstone. And this entropy endstone, it's, it's not, it cannot be used really for anything. So I'll just get rid of it. Um, and this 25 endstone though, they will be very, very useful very, very soon. Our inventory is getting pretty full, so I think at this point it's time to jump on our horse and head back home. It is good to be back, and from our travels we brought a couple wooden storage crate full of bees and items, and on top of this two full travelers backpacks with a bunch of additional items. So all in all, I think we had a pretty nice haul this time around. But this is the good place to make a cut in this episode. And in the next one, we will have to figure out a new uh, storage system to store all the items we found. But for now, I wanted to thank you all very much for watching. And I hope to see you all next time. Same place.